Hey, I'm Jamie. And I'm Jay. And today we're gonna make Cullen a wicked awesome bed. A wicked awesome Viking bed. Viking Montessori floor bed. With dragons also. Inspired by how to train your dragon. Vikings, dragons, Montessori's, floors, and beds. Beds. All, all the greatest things wrapped up into one video just for you. So the idea behind the Montessori floor bed is that everything is low and just kid size, so they can get in and out of bed on their own and they're free to be independent and explore their world. But one distinct feature of these cool beds is that they have a frame that kind of comes up and kind of looks like a little house and that was what was really cool to us and kind of inspired us to make one. But because we like to go a little bit extra, we decided to make it uh, How to Train Your Dragon inspired. So we looked at the houses in the film, which are all really cool and they've got like cool A-frames and Celtic designs on them and dragon heads. You know, we decided we wanted to make our bed look like that. She'll never mention it, but she actually worked on that film. All three of them actually. So we had some cool artwork around the house that got us super inspired to do it this way. Now we purposely made the bed really easy to make. You can get all the materials at Home Depot. It requires a couple saws and a Craig jig, things like that. And if you don't want to make it a dragon viking bed, you totally don't have to. You can just do the plain A-frame and it'll still look really awesome. If you do enjoy the video, hitting the like button and leaving us a comment letting us know really helps us out a lot. Plus, we just really like hearing from you. And share it with your friends. If your friends would like it. They'll probably like it. They might like it. Literally all the lumber is just 2 by 4s and 3 quarter inch thick pine that you can get at almost any store. And what we're going to do first is cut all of our pieces down to length. We chose to use a twin size mattress, so all of our dimensions are based around a twin size bed. But if you want to make it bigger, like a fuller queen, all you have to do is make the uh, dimensions a little bit longer. One of the nice things about 2x4s and this easy lumber is that you can pretty much use any saw you have to, to cut it. We're going to use a miter saw to do it, but if you have a hand saw, or a circular saw, or a chainsaw, you can use whatever you want and it'll be fine. Laser saw? <laughs> Laser saw. Is that a thing? It should be a thing. Why don't you... Is laser saw a thing? <laughs> Let us know. Come on, tool companies. Where's the laser saws? <laughs> I was picturing Jamie running around with like a laser just cutting everything in half, including like our car. It seems dangerous. And, yeah. They should not Never exist. Mind. Yeah. Tool companies. That's no, why. No laser saws. Almost every single cut in the whole build is just a basic 90 degree, but there are a couple of angles for making the A-frame that sits on top. You can reference the plans to get the exact measurements and angles, but to cut them, you basically just make a mark with a protractor and then use the whatever saw you're using to, to cut the angle. We want our mattress to sit a little bit up above the floor, so on the inside of the side rails we put a 2x4 on each side and then we're going to span the distance across that with some plywood and the mattress will sit on top of the plywood. For each side we cut a 2x4 two, 2 inches shorter than the rail itself and then we glued it on the inside. To glue it on you just put a bunch of wood glue on the 2x4 and then you're going to clamp it to the side rail. It doesn't need to be exactly lining up with either end, but roughly an inch in from either side is what you're going for. And you want the bottom of the 2x4 though to be aligned with the bottom of the side rail so that they sit flat on the floor. Once these are dry, it's going to create a nice little ledge for a piece of plywood and that's what our mattress is going to sit on. If you do happen to have a really tall plush twin mattress, you may not need that. You may want it to sit on the ground. We just wanted ours to be a little bit above the side rails, so make it shorter creative choices. To assemble our bed, we are going to use a magical thing called pocket holes. Pocket holes are magical because you don't see screws on the outside. It's like a diagonal screw from the inside. So they're all these. They're also really, really easy. You basically just need this one little tool called a Craig jig, which is very affordable, very easy to use, and it's, yeah, it's magic. Viking magic. What might be the most challenging part of the build is right at the top where the two 2x4s two come together, we're going to cut what's called a half lap joint so that they perfectly overlap and they kind of align correctly. Now to determine where the half laps go, we could have used math and angles and figured it all out, but we didn't want to do that. So we just laid out the bed frame on the ground, put the 2x4s there, and then marked where they overlapped.
which is way easier. Again, not super precise, but neither was hand-hewn Viking craftsmanship. Actually, I don't know. They could have been really precise. <laughs> they were probably very precise. We're not, though. There's always a lot of different ways you can make stuff like this, but the way we're going to show you today is with a circular saw and a chisel. We're going to set the depth of the blade to be exactly half of the width of the 2x4. And then we're going to make a whole bunch of cuts right in between the two outside lines of our joint. And then all you have to do is take like a hammer or a mallet or something like that and just knock them all out of the way and you get almost all the waste out immediately. You're going to take a chisel and roughly flatten the bottom. You're never going to see this and it doesn't need to be perfect, so just get it mostly there. You're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite 2x4 and then they're going to overlap perfectly. More Viking magic. Now, back in Viking times, they didn't have... <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pretty sure they didn't have joiners and planers and fancy things like that. We wanted the bed to look like it was hand-hewn, so to do this, we were using something called power carving. Now, power carving sounds a little intimidating, but it is super easy and really, really fun. Power carving! <laughs> Sorry. So to power carve, you take an angle grinder and you put on a shaping disc. And the shaping disc we're using is from Cutsaw. It has a coarse grit. And to duplicate the effect we're looking for, we just did some wavy horizontal lines along the length of the wood and gave it a quick sand after that. Obviously, you don't have to do this, right? You just use the wood and it's still gonna look great, so don't feel like you have to do this, but if you're looking for a way to plus it and you're trying to challenge yourself as a maker, this is a lot easier than it looks, and you could definitely try it. We power carved all of the surfaces that you can see, but we made sure not to power carve where the wood joins up together because you want a nice flush joinery. So to keep with the theme, we wanted to make our wood darker. Now instead of painting it, we decided to stain it, so that way you could still see some of the grain and texture underneath, and it gave it a really cool look. Before you stain, make sure you sand it to whatever sort of smoothness you're going for, and then wipe away all the sawdust with a clean rag. Then you're going to take your stain and you're going to apply it with another clean rag and just put it all over the whole surface. And you wait about 10 minutes or so, wipe off any of the excess that's still there, and then you're going to let it dry for a day or two. So like a lot of finishes, it's really important that you wait until it's 100% cured before you put it in the kid's bedroom. Just like the rest of the furniture in your house, once it's fully cured, this stuff is fine, but during that curing process for the first few days, it's going to give off fumes and you don't want kids anywhere near it. In the How to Train Your Dragon concept art, there's a lot of Celtic knotwork and things decorating the sides of their buildings and boats and things like that. So we were really inspired by that and we wanted to duplicate one of those patterns on the outside A-frame of the bed. This pattern is a repeating knot, so we made a little template and then we traced that pattern onto the wood. And then we used a turquoise milk paint, which is like a really nice paint for stuff like this. And we painted on the base layer and then did a golden outline to accentuate the actual sort of knot part of it. This part blew my mind, to be totally honest. This is, what, this is what I call pulling a Jamie. She's like, oh, I had this idea and I want to try this thing. I'm like, yeah, sure, of course. You know? And then it was like the coolest thing ever. I mean, look at this. It looks amazing. So what's next? Well, so far the bed is super Viking-y, but not nearly dragon-y enough. So we decided to make a dragon. We're making the dragon from the same materials as we made the bed, so we took the two cutoffs from the side rails and glued them together to make a thicker piece. Jamie then drew an amazing dragon outline by hand, and we scanned it into the computer and we used our CNC to cut out the outline of the shape. Once that rough outline was cut out, we then used a hand router to basically create a bunch of really cool details on the inside of the shape. From there, we used the same stain as before to give it that nice deep brown walnut color. And when that was dry, Jamie got to work. In the How to Train Your Dragon art book, there's a lot of really bright, bold colors, and we really wanted to emulate this look for our dragon. We did the outside of it the same blue, and then inside we did a nice gold for the eye and red for the face of the dragon. So it was time to start assembling the bed. And like any good Wicked Makers project, we realized that mistakes were made. 
you've all been waiting for this part. What did Jay and Jamie screw up on this project? The first thing was since we cut an angle at the bottom of the A-frame, we forgot that the basically there's going to be an overlap where that point is going to stick out a little bit. It was easy to fix, we just had to trim off the end of all of the diagonal pieces and then put a little stain on there. No big deal. So the next mistake was also in the same joint area where the A-frame connects to the frame of the bed. Now our plan was to connect these two areas with dowels, but since we power carved all the pieces, we had no way to find the exact center and where these dowels should actually be placed. So instead, we were able to build a little jig and make the best guess of where the dowel should be, and it worked. We should have done it first. That would be the normal, basic, easy thing to do, is before we power carved everything, we should have found all of the center points for these 2x4s, drilled the holes, got everything lined up, and then power carved them. Ooh, I forgot. That would have been smart. But luckily, you get to learn from our mistakes and not do that. Next up was to assemble the headboard and the footboard and using those pocket screws from before, it was super easy. We just laid everything upside down, aligned the back of the boards, and screwed them in. Once the headboard and the footboard were assembled, we took a piece of 2x4, just like on the side rails, and we glued it to the inside along the bottom edge. This is going to help to support the piece of plywood that's going to hold our mattress up. So we also drilled pocket holes on the sideboards to connect it to the head and the footboard, but like any normal bed, we're going to wait to assemble those till we actually get it into the bedroom so we can actually fit it through the house. Now there's a ridge board that's going to connect the very top between the two sort of crosses of the A-frame, and to connect that, we're going to drill a hole right through the middle of where the two 2x4s two come together, and then we're going to use these really cool IKEA-style barrel nuts, and we're going to drill a hole in the back of the ridge board where the barrel nut will go, and then this screw is going to go through the front of the X and screw right into that barrel nut. And that's going to hold the whole thing together nice and tight, but also be really easy to disassemble if we ever need to move the bed around. At long last, it was time to finally put the bed together. Hey y'all, thanks for sticking with us. We really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. It really, really helps us out. And if you want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe to the Wicked Makers channel. Stay wicked. Besides, blah, blah. Now we're making, nah. Two by four is benote. 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 I might do. I said today, another, I'll have to fire. Have some fire.